There's a place in the woods called Aspen Ridge. This is where we call home. We are the Popple People. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for stopping by. In this episode, we'll feature how we built the 18-foot big beam that we'll be using to span the distance across the front opening on the saw shack. The cost to buy a 2 by 12 by 20 foot laminated beam was around 200 US dollars. That was the closest length to what we needed to span the gap, and $200 was way too much money. So we made one ourselves instead for a fraction of the cost. We ended up using 18 foot 2 by 10s and some plywood scraps that we had left over from a different project. Any way we looked at it, we would have had to buy wood for this project because our sawmill maximum cut length was 16 feet 9 inches and that was on a Woodland Mills HM122 and it had one track extension on it. First we squared up the ends to make sure the 2 by 10s are all exactly 18 feet long. Next, the plywood was cut to match the width of the 2x10s, and then those plywood strips were affixed to the first piece of lumber. We used an adhesive to tack the two together, and then small nails were added as well. Then another layer of adhesive was applied, and the second 2x10 was added and nailed into place. Then we did one more layer with a third 2x10. So we had some big metal brackets custom made. So he's marking where each of those will go and then making a note just so no nails are placed in those areas. And finally that last 2x10 got nailed in and then this big beam is finished. What do you think? Will it work on the front? Let us know in the comments. So we actually ended up building another beam like this to span the other six feet across the front of the saw shack. Next, a little bit of prep work needed to be done to mark and drill the holes where the metal brackets will fasten these two beams to each other and then attach them all to the posts. So the spray paint method actually worked really well. It was considerably easier to get everything drilled out here on the ground and then dry fit it all together versus trying to wrestle with these big beams when they're eight feet up in the air atop the posts. We ended up having these big brackets custom made just so they fit everything precisely and then they were also drilled out so that the carriage bolts could drop down inside. A little bit of prep work was done beforehand and these temporary supports were built on both sides of that 18 foot span so that the big beam could rest on these. This actually ended up working out really well. It was considerably easier to work that big beam up incrementally like this rather than trying to hoist it all the way to the top in one big lift. Maybe took a little longer, but no one got hurt and he was able to move it by himself. When you're working out here in the forest like this, you need to be extra careful because if you get injured, it's a lot more complicated to get help and it'll take a lot longer for emergency personnel to find you and get to your location. So we try to be extremely careful when we're out working back here in the woods. As another safety precaution, these stops were also installed in the top of each post as well. Luckily, nothing got away from us, but it was just reassuring to have them there, just in case. Ooh, she was a heavy one, but we ended up getting this big beam up, so hard part's over, right? I think I've said that about something in every Saw Shack video so far, but I believe this is the last hard part. Pretty sure it'll be easier from here on out. Then we just had to nudge that beam into position. And while he's fiddling with this, he also ended up placing some temporary blocks on the front of each post as well, just so that it wouldn't slip off front or back. Thank you. 
after that 18 footer, this little six footer should be a piece of cake, right? figured it'd probably be best to check for level here before these get bolted in. And it turns out we ended up needing a small shim under the end of that six footer. The ends of these big beams were tacked in with screws and just like that, the front beams are up. Great success. These turned out wonderfully. So the saw shack is really starting to shape up and look like something here. Finally, those metal brackets needed to be installed, and since that spray paint method worked so well to mark the holes on the ground, we decided to go with that here again on the posts. Once those holes were drilled out, these brackets were installed, and we ended up using carriage bolts to affix these. As always, if you'd like to get a hold of us with questions or comments, please email us at thepopplepeople, all one word, at gmail.com, or plip plop a comment below. We love hearing from you. Well, what do you think? We are in an area that gets about three to four feet of snowfall each winter. Will these homemade beams work as our header? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. We appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video and want to follow our saw shack journey, please consider subscribing. That way, you can be a popple people too. We'll see you soon.